in the interest of full disclosure, HP sent me this laptop to review and I do get to keep it after this video goes out. But I want to make it clear that I've been so impressed with this laptop that I'm thinking about buying it for my developers. It's a phenomenal deal for the price and I think it makes a lot of sense for programmers. Hence the name Dev1. So let's talk about this machine. At first blush, the Dev1 has gorgeous industrial design that feels absolutely quality in the hand or on the lap. The chassis is some kind of metal, it feels like aluminum to me, and its angular design is sleek. The screen to bezel ratio is slimmer than what I've come to expect from many laptops in this price range, and the keyboard offers a premium typing experience. It's no mechanical keyboard, but of the many laptops I have used, this one offers satisfying feedback that's often neglected from other manufacturers. The keyboard has a backlight with three settings, off, minimum, and maximum, but I haven't seen the backlight automatically enabling itself in low light situations. You've got to enable it manually, but this is something I'd like to see in a future update, perhaps a software setting that allows the keyboard to automatically enable its backlight in low light settings. It also has a track point nub, which I've always appreciated being included on a laptop, but I've never actually used myself, which is interesting. And funny enough, the only modern machines that I've seen with a track point nub is the ThinkPad series, and I feel like its inclusion here is a statement. The HP Dev 1 seems to be aiming directly to compete with the ThinkPad, and in my book, I think it's a better contender. The typeface used on the keyboard is rather inoffensive, if a little bit chunky. Using exclusively capital letters for alphabetical characters, while the control and function keys are exclusively lowercase, it feels a little strange to this designer's sensibilities. The keyboard is reportedly spill resistant, which I don't intend to test firsthand. Uh, the keyboard is also somehow missing play, pause, next, and previous media keys. And I'm not sure how they managed to exclude these buttons here, but I use them all the time and their exclusion here is a bit frustrating for me. My biggest complaint about the keyboard is that I prefer to have a numpad and a more traditional layout of the home and delete and insert keys. But for this form factor and what they were going for, this is more than serviceable for a developer's needs. And now the trackpad. I mean, this is a premium feeling trackpad. It's actually made of glass and that adds to the quality feel. And note that the buttons at the top of the trackpad are actually meant for the track point. The trackpad is actually a click pad. You can click the full trackpad in uh, and you can also uh, use multi-touch gestures, which I find myself using to no end. So let's talk about the specs. At the heart, the Dev1 sports an 8-core AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 5850U at a base clock of 1.9 GHz and it's able to boost up to 4.4 GHz. The machine also boasts dual-channel 16 GB of DDR4 RAM at 3200 megatransfers a second. This is two 8 GB SODIMM modules that are fully user-upgradable up to 64 gigs. It's excellent to see as many vendors are moving away from user-serviceable laptops at all. For storage, the Dev1 comes with a PCIe Gen 3x4 1TB SSD. This too is also user upgradable as it's seated in an M.2 slot. The Dev1 has a 14-inch 1920x1080 Full HD display with 1000 nits of peak brightness. This screen is behind glass and seems to feature an anti-glare coating of some kind. Though viewing angles are quite low on this display, and that might be intentional as off-axis viewing seems to behave like a privacy filter rather than the colors being warped at off-screen angles like you would see on cheap LCD screens. And this screen is driven by an integrated AMD Renoir-based Radeon chipset. Now, having been spoiled by my Steam Deck for the last few months, the performance of the Renoir chip is significantly less than I am used to, but still more than enough for the typical types of workloads you would see or encounter on this device. Low-end gaming is definitely doable, but AAA titles are not going to perform spectacularly. One of the most impressive aspects of this hardware is the sound quality of the integrated speakers. While they're decidedly laptop speakers, they are plenty loud with a surprising dynamic range. I easily found myself listening to music with these speakers, and surprisingly, my inner audio file didn't cringe too harshly. On the flip side, there's the camera. Now, to be expected, this is a 720p potato. It does not look good. Colors are either way too oversaturated or completely washed out. And even in ideal lighting conditions, the sensor introduces an enormous amount of noise to the image. This is what the audio sounds like from the dual microphone array though. So 
You'll have to let me know how that sounds. <laughs> but one cool feature is a mechanical shutter that actually covers the lens and physically blocks the sensor for added privacy. The shutter is even visible over the camera, which is much appreciated. For connectivity, the Dev1 comes loaded for bear. The right side sports a barrel jack power connector, an HDMI 2.0 port, and two USB Type-C 10 gigabit ports. It also supports USB charging. On the other side, we have a Kensington lock, two type A USB ports at five gigabytes a second, and one headphone microphone combo jack. The Dev1 has a combination Realtek RTL8822 CE Wi-Fi AC 2x2 and Bluetooth 5 chipset. Now, the battery is quoted as having all day battery and up to 12 hours of battery. Uh, in my testing with 75% screen brightness and light usage writing this video script, for example, I used just under 40% of the battery in three hours. That's not bad, but it's a far cry from the 12 hours of battery life that's boasted on the website. Maybe if I reduced the screen brightness, I'd get closer to the 12 hour mark, but at half brightness in my living room, it just wasn't going to cut it at half brightness. Before we move on to the software though, let me ask you a question. Are you enjoying this video? If you are, make sure you like that smash button and tickle that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the summer, and I think with your help, we can do it. And thanks. All right, let's talk about the software. Frankly, there's a reason that HP chose Pop! OS for the Dev1 notebook. Pop! OS is quickly becoming one of the most excellent Linux distributions. Between their enthusiasm for free and open source software and their focus on maximizing productivity in the UI, System76 has made quite a compelling Linux offering here. And despite one highly public faux pas with Linus Tech Tips, Pop! OS has a reputation for being a highly polished and easy to use Linux distro. And while this video could be all about Pop, I don't think that that's the main thrust that I wanna make with this video. Instead, let's imagine what this machine would look like if it shipped with Windows. If this notebook had shipped with Windows, it would have had various applications installed to manage the settings of this particular device and its accessories, with all of this device's bespoke settings spread across multiple different applications. Meanwhile, with Pop! OS, all the included software customizations are built into the settings panel to provide a superior and more ethical user experience. And when I say more ethical, I mean that you don't have privacy affecting and other settings hidden across disparate applications. They're centralized in a single settings menu, and they're easy to find using familiar user interface paradigms. And let's talk about that for a second, because this version of Pop! OS comes with built-in telemetry that provides you with a proper choice of whether to enable it or not. Furthermore, you may easily access all of the information that's ever been sent to HP. You can delete any or all of that data that's ever been sent, and you can opt in or out at any time. This is enormous because the fact of the matter is free and open source software must embrace user metrics and telemetry if it wants to improve compared to proprietary offerings. But it also must practice ethical data collection practices. And that's where HP and System76 have hit the nail on the head. It's fantastic to see. And if you're a developer, Pop! OS is a great choice for you. Not only does it have the aforementioned user interface improvements to differentiate itself from upstream GNOME, but it also features flat packs for up-to-date packages and all of the offerings that you've come to expect from a modern Linux distribution. But the Dev1 is not the only device on offer here. HP is selling two accessories on their website, which they kindly sent me for review. The System76 Launch Configurable Keyboard and the HP 935 Creator Wireless Mouse. Now, I am quite familiar with the System76 Launch Keyboard, and I published a review of it last year. They included the Launch Keyboard here for me to review, and I really love this thing. It's awesome. This is the same model they sent for me to review, so if you want an in-depth analysis, you can check out my video here. For the Creator Wireless Mouse though, it's nice. It fits in my hand well. It's got seven configurable buttons, which is more than enough. Plus it can connect to up to three different devices, two Bluetooth and one via the included wireless dongle. It's also chargeable via USB-C. And finally, it has horizontal scrolling, which is a feature I can no longer live without. My biggest complaint with this mouse is that it's incredibly light. I know many people prefer a very light mouse, but coming in at just over a quarter of a pound, it feels too light to me. So light as to feel cheaply made, even though it's not. Other small nitpicks is that I have accidentally hit the button to switch device connections several times 
while meaning to hit the back button. And additionally, the mechanical toggle between smooth and staccato scrolling is just that mechanical. Coming from my Logitech MX Master mouse, the comparable button on my daily driver electronically activates the toggle and the mechanical button on the creator mouse makes it feel like a slight step down. Again, it's a minor nitpick. For those impatient few who want my TLDR, here it is. The HP Dev1 notebook PC is, to me, a virtually flawless piece of hardware for its target demographic. The screen, the keyboard, trackpad, chassis, CPU, speakers, upgradable RAM and storage at $1,099 US dollars, it's worth every penny to me. And for its stated goal of being a notebook aimed at developers, it's a no compromises device. It doesn't have any of the superfluous junk that you might find on its competitors. And aside from a frankly awful webcam and the fact that I, it could withstand a larger screen and full size keyboard, this is a superb laptop, one of the best that I've actually had the pleasure of using, in fact. And the inclusion of Pop! OS here is a match made in heaven. If you're interested in the Dev1, use the link below to learn even more. But I'd like to know what you think. Have you had the chance to use the HP Dev1 notebook? What features are you most excited for? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to Glenn Steen, one of my top tier Singularity members on Patreon. It's because of folks like Glenn over on Patreon that I've been able to continue making these kind of videos for you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, consider making a pledge with the links below to become a Linux warrior. And thank you. That's going to do it for this video, though. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.